So now I want to talk about the SNS delivery retry policy. And this is, you know, it says it's optional, but I think this is an important thing to be aware of at the minimum. Uh, you can probably leave this as the default settings, but this is going to be what defines how SNS handles retries. Uh, so in the example that I was giving before, where we have, you know, phones that are subscribers to our endpoint, you know, a phone isn't always in reception. Sometimes you can go underground. Sometimes, you know, you're in the remote countryside and you may not have some very good reception. Uh, so SNS will try to deliver to your endpoint, but it may not be able to. Uh, so this is what's going to control the SNS retry policy in those types of circumstances. Like I said, the defaults are probably good enough, but let's just walk through exactly what's going on here. So by default here, it's just automatically asking us to use the default delivery uh, retry policy. But like I said, this is probably going to be fine for most of you, but, but this may need to be tuned a little bit for some specific users with some specific circumstances. So I'm going to leave this as on by default. But I just want to go over to the JSON preview section and we can see here that there's a whole bunch of different concepts here. So number of retries, number of re delay retries, uh, delay target, max delay target, back off function, like what is going on here? So let's go through these one by one. So number of retries, what is this saying? Well, this is pretty straightforward. This is the number of times SNS is going to retry if it cannot successfully get a 200 OK from your subscription endpoint. So for instance, if you have a scenario where you have a device that may not be online, when a message is attempting to be published to that device's endpoint, that's gonna consume a retry. But in this scenario, we would retry two more times because our number of retries is set to three here. Now, the maximum that you can set is, uh, I believe, 100. And that's a crazy amount of retries. You should probably never have 100 retries. If you do, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, I would say a more healthy number is probably something between three and five. That's going to capture a large majority of use cases and guarantee the most fault tolerance in case, you know, your endpoint is down for a particular point in time. Now, the next one, a uh, number of no delay retries. So there's this concept of back off when you have a failure. So for instance, like if you are publishing to a topic and something cannot be delivered, it doesn't really make sense to just say, okay, I'm going to try right away again and maybe it'll succeed. Often when systems are rejecting a request, say for instance, if you have an app that's the endpoint, if, if you're not getting a 200 OK, it usually means that the server is kind of either down or overwhelmed with requests. So it's a much better idea to introduce some kind of delay into when you attempt to publish to the uh, consumer the next time. Now with this number of no delay retries, this is by default set at zero. I don't think you should mess with this because this just basically means like if you set this to three and number of retries to three, that means that every time you fail, you're going to retry right after. There's going to be no delay. Uh, and that's probably not what you want. Uh, so I don't really know why this exists. Seems like a bad idea, but I guess for some applications, it may be a useful concept. Now, the next section here, min delay target and max delay target. Uh, so the minimum delay target is what you would expect. It's the minimum amount of time that you want to wait between retries. Now you can, like there's something weird going on here, right? We have the minimum and the maximum set to the same number by default. So that means you're gonna wait 20 seconds every time. And if I change this to, zero, oh, I actually can't type in there. If I take that, can I type in there? Minimum delay, there we go. So if you set that to zero and your policy document obviously changes over here. So now that means you're going to have a minimum and a maximum of 20. So your first, depending on your back off function, which we're going to get into a little bit later, your first retry may take place two seconds after the failure. And then your next retry may take four seconds after that. And then your next retry will take place eight seconds after that. So you can see it's growing uh, by a factor of two every time. Uh, so you can kind of set a range here to say between zero and 20, this is my lower bound and this is my upper bound. And this is affected by the back off function that you're gonna use. And I'll get into that in a moment. Now the number of min delay retries and the number of maximum delay retries. Now this is more of an advanced topic and it falls into the, the multiple phases that exist when you're working with SNS in terms of retries. Now when a message fails, there's something called a pre-backoff phase. 
Uh, then there, what follows that is the actual back off phase. And then there's the post back off phase. I'm not going to get into what that is because it's kind of complicated for the large majority of you. You probably just want to keep these at zero. That's all I'm going to say about it. There's some very good documentation about this. So if you're a more advanced user, uh, go ahead and read that. But I don't want to confuse any beginner users that are just getting started with SNS. And then we can see here that we have a back off function that we can select. So we have linear here set by default. The other options are arithmetic, geometric, um, and exponential, I believe is the fourth one. And now exponential is one that I usually use just because you can set it up such that with each failure you receive on the delivery side, you wait for a longer period of time every time. Uh, so you'd go from, you know, wait two seconds, then to wait four seconds, then to wait eight seconds, then to wait 16 seconds. And that's constantly being increased by a factor of two here. But you can set this to whatever option you think works best for your application. And then you also have this option down here, which allows you to disable subscription overrides. So I believe this is actually a new feature that they've recently added. So what this allows you to do is to allow the subscriber to set whatever settings they want. Here we are the producer, we are the owner of the topic, but maybe my subscriber has something special about them, something that they want to specify. Maybe instead of linear, they like geometric, or maybe uh, instead of waiting 20 seconds, they want to wait up to a minute. Um, so if you disable this, if you set this to true, the subscribers are not going to be able to specify these details. Um, so that's something to be aware of. For most people, it's not going to matter. I usually just keep this as the default. And if someone comes and asks me later if I can turn something on or off, I usually just make the a judgment call then. Um, but this kind of explains to you a little bit about delivery retry policy. Again, I suggest just use the default majority of the time, but I think it's something important to note, especially if you're seeing some weird behaviors, especially during failures when delivering messages to your endpoints.